Thank God for today. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in this very day, especially being the last Sunday in the month of September. That means that God has brought us to the end of September. We just have a few more days to go uh, with gladness and with joy. And we give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. We give him all the adoration. Thank you, Lord. Just for one minute, I want you to just lift up your voice wherever you are and just give glory to God for the first nine months of this year. I want you to appreciate him. I want you to tell him how grateful you are as an individual, as a family, as a church. Let's give thanks to God. Remember, the Bible says, in all things, give thanks. In every situation, give thanks. For that is his will concerning us. Let's appreciate him. The God of the universe that rules in the affairs of men. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for upholding us, for strengthening us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your joy. That is our strength. We appreciate you, O God of heaven. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to appreciate God for the word of God that is coming your way today. The strength it will give to you. The joy it will give to you. The way it will make for you. The door it will open unto you. The victory it will grant unto you. Appreciate God for what God wants to do in your life today, in my life today. We thank you, Lord, for what you are set to do in the life of each and every one of us. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Thank you, Lord, for joy. Thank you for peace. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for way where there seems to be no way. Oh, thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. Blessed be your holy name. Have your way in our midst this morning, oh God. Do things that only you can do. Strengthen and empower your word. Lord, let it not fall on the ground in the name of Jesus. Let it gain entrance into the heart of men in the name of Jesus. Even through the airwaves, into every home, every, every computer, every phone, every device. Lord, let your word gain entrance in the name of Jesus. We come against every form of distraction, physical, medical, you know, mental, emotional, or spiritual. We uh, uh, enthrone the name of Jesus, the name that is lifted above every other name. We enthrone that name right now. Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to God. All right? We appreciate the choir, you know, for that great time in the presence of the Lord. We appreciate always uh, the team behind the scene, the crew with me here in the mini studio, mini studio I'm preaching from, <laughs> and the crew uh, uh, at the technical room, the, 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 the camera room, uh, the audio room, uh, all of you walking behind the scene to make this, this service a success and getting it to the homes of um, hundreds of people across the globe. We appreciate your effort and you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to carry on with the, um, with the service of today and we'll continue with the series we've been, we've been looking at how to handle pain and or grieve. How to handle pain or grieve. That's what we've been looking at, and this is the third uh, of the series. This is the third session. And in the, in the first session, we, we talked about, you know, productive mindset is what you require uh, when you face tests and trials like this. And we said the first mindset that is productive is the mindset of thanksgiving, a mind that is filled with thanksgiving, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Uh, we said, why do you need to thank God? Because number one, when you face, you know, pain and grief or trials and tribulations, it's an opportunity for a greater glory and greater gladness. As we see in First Peter chapter 4, you know, verse 12 and verse 13. We also said, because a time of trial and tribulation is an opportunity for greater dimension of perfection. As it is said in James chapter 1, from verse 2 to 4. 
We also said the third reason why you should, you know, be full of thanksgiving to the Lord is because God is not the source of our pain or grief. God is never the source of our pain or our grief. Job said, you know, God, God gave it and God take it. You know, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a wrong doctrine. That was just Job's opinion. That's why, you know, prophet, um, uh, you know, uh, that was with, with him, uh, actually rebooked him. He said, uh, Job, you spoke out of knowledge. He said, you spoke without wisdom. And if you look at this, this story and the, and, the, and the scenario that led to Job making that statement, like I explained, God gathered with his children and Satan was among them. And God said to Satan, have you seen Job, you know, who is righteous? and who fear me. And Satan said, he did not just fear you for nothing. You just stretch forth your hand and touch him. You will see that he will curse you to your face. And God, because God doesn't do anything like that, he told Satan, he said, everything Job has is in your hand. In other words, you go and do the touching you want to do and, and see if Job will curse me or not. But God said, his life I have not given to you, you must not touch. So God permitted Satan to touch everything that Job had, his children, his belonging, his wealth, but he, 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 you know, he restricted what the devil could do to Job. So we saw from that story that God doesn't do evil. He doesn't cost us pain. He doesn't cost us grief to prove whether we love him or not whether we are faithful to him or not. That's not the nature of God. He loves us too much to cause us pain. You have no idea the magnitude of the love of God for us as human beings. So he loves, he loves us beyond measure. It's, 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 it's unconditional love. And he will not need to cause us pain before, you know, for him to test us. In fact, he will not even cause us pain because we did anything wrong. That's not his nature. The Bible says he, it is not the will of God that anyone should perish, but that all may come, you know, to the knowledge of God and to the salvation that his son has provided unto us. So Satan is the source of grief and pain. And we also said that the law of sin and death, which is the law of, you know, wrongdoing and consequences of wrongdoing, is the second source of pain and grief that happens. You know, if you open your window and jump out, you are, you are violating a law. You know, you, you have violated the law and there will be a consequence. You can probably break your leg. At that time, it's not Satan that's doing it. You are the one who jumped out, except, you know, if it's, it's spiritually motivated, that Satan motivated you to jump. We also saw, said that the third source of uh, pain and grief like this is the requirement for next level. Requirement for next level. You know, in life, before you go to the next level, there are certain pain you have to endure. You know, if you finish primary school, you have primary school certificate, for you to get to, uh, to get into secondary school, there are certain pain of studying, hard studying, hard work you have to endure, otherwise you can pass the entrance exam. And for you to get into the university, for instance, you have to endure the pain of study and reading and working hard in order to get into college. And before you get out of college and you can be called a qualified professional, for instance, there's further pain of study and hard work that you have to go through, you know. So there are certain pain and grief that comes with life, you know, uh, just like a coach. Your coach will take you through some exercises that may bring you pain and, and, and stress, but it's because he wants to make you uh, better. So in life, next level, you know, comes with some, you know, level of pain and grief as the case, you know, may be. So these are the top three sources of you know pain and and grief and 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 discomfort that we talked uh, about so uh and we mentioned how to handle each of them you know last week but today we're going to move forward because of our time okay so if god is not the source of pain and grief uh it could be satan it could be the laws of life or it could be the requirement for your next level then so what's the role of god What's the role of God in a time, you know, like this? You know, and I want to share on what role God plays uh, from scriptural perspective and then from experiential perspective. Like I said, you know, the Bible says, you know, we are, we, God has comforted us so that we can comfort others 
with the comfort with which God comforted us. You know, so the way God comforted me in the course of this, I'm sharing with my family, I'm sharing with the church family, and I'm sharing with you know, you know, the whole wild world that may be listening to me, in case you are going through similar situation, in case you've gone through similar situation in the past and you've not found comfort. So I'm bringing comfort to you from the comfort with which God has comforted me. You know, one role that God plays in a time like this, uh, according to the scriptures and by my own experience in all of this, uh, I know that, you know, a time will come when my wife will be in position to be able to share her own experience and also bring comfort to you all from the comfort with which God has comforted her. Because I know that God is comforting her, you know, already. You know, we can see the evidence that God is comforting her. You know, uh, uh, being a woman and um, be the, being the one in the house when it actually began, I was not, I was not there in the house when it began and uh, being the one that accompanying him to the hospital when he was going and all the nine yards, you know, before uh, the doctors took him to ICU and uh, before I got on the scene and was in the ICU. And being a, the mother that carried him in, his, in her womb for nine months, nursed him, you know, you know. So her own experience is different from mine. And I'm persuaded and convinced that when, it, when she's strong enough, she's going to, you know, be able to bring you know, strong word of comfort, you know, to, to, you know, each and every one of us from, from the comfort that he has, she has received, you know, from, from the Lord. Uh, every Sunday, you know, one or two leaders, they, 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 they share their own experience, their own feeling, what's going on in their mind, you know, the comfort that has come to them uh, from the Lord, or even from, you know, my sharing, they share back their comfort with me from the comfort they got from my sharing with them, they share that comfort back with me, and they don't even know that the comfort they share back with me also comforts me further, you know? That's just the way this thing is. So the first role of God in a situation like this, which is very comforting, is that when you are going through trial and tribulations like that, pain and grief like that, God goes through it with you. God is there with you. God is there with you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5b, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5b, for he had said, you know, be part of it, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When God said never, it means never. On top of the valley, he's there. At the bottom of the valley, he's there. On top of the mountain, he's there. And the pl on the plain, he's there. When things are good, God is there. When things are good again, God is there. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. No matter what happened, you know, God is there. It's very comforting. Look, there are certain journeys you embark upon and people will begin to drop back, you know, you know, little by little. There are certain ways you go and at a point in time, you will find yourself being alone. Look at the journey of Jesus to the cross. At a point in time, he became, he was there by himself. The, 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 the tree that goes with him to, you know, special places, the one that sleeps on his chest, you know, as the Bible puts it, you know, the, 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 the 72, you know, uh, the, the 400, uh, nobody, little by little by little. In fact, Peter told the people that I have never known him in my life. He swore, yes, I have never known this man in my life. Why? Because at that point, the stage where Jesus was, nobody wanted to get to that point with him. But is God not a good God that he said, it does not matter. I will never leave you not forsake you. Matthew 28, 20. Matthew 28, 20, part B. He said, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Brethren, in that time, you know, I told you, it's a one-week Bible school that of two years curriculum for me. It's an advanced Bible school, two years advanced Bible school that I went through in one week. But in that period of one week, I knew it's not, not, not just not just based on scripture, not just based on the, on the promise of the scripture, but I actually, I knew that God was with me throughout that time. God was with me. In fact, at times, his presence will just make me burst into tears. And, and I will just tell my wife, he said, you know, he will say, why are you, are you crying? I said, the overwhelming presence of God is what is making me 
uh, uh, cry. So God was with me throughout that one week. God was there with me throughout that one week. There, there is no doubt about that. I felt his presence all the time. There was no time I felt as if God has left me. There was no time I felt as if God was no longer with me. I felt his presence at all times. So whatever you are going through, one rule of God there is that God, you know, it's there with you. He go through it. He goes through it with you at all times. Second, second rule of God in a situation like that during trials and tribulation is that he supplies life throughout the journey. Because situations like, like that, you know, circumstances like that, you know, tribulation and trials, you know, pain and grief, you know, at times it comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You know, but God comes to supply life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You know, life is light you know life is what gives light life is what brings restoration of whatever is being stolen is being destroyed or is being killed and i could see when there was confusion not knowing what what to do the life of god came to show light you know and like i said to you even when you know we we got, we, we got to a time when you know, uh, there was no longer, you know, life in Daniel, no breath, no nothing, no pause. You know, God was there. And at a point in time in, in that journey, God restored back, you know, uh, the life into into Daniel. And I will share that, you know, uh, what happened thereafter as we, as we go. So God is the supplier of life throughout that journey. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The answer to stealing, killing, and destruction that the devil may do, that the law of life may bring to you, or that, you know, the requirement of life may even bring to you, you know, life is the answer to every, you know, every, 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 every aspect of such dealings. So God supply, there's constant supply of life. There's constant supply of the spirit of God. There's constant supply, supply of light, you know, throughout you know the tribulation you know how the bible says that your word will be a light on my way and a lamp you know to my feet you know you know the bible says even when i'm in the shadow of the valley of death he said you know thou art with me your rod and your and your staff they compass me you know the, the rod and the staff of god is the word and the voice of god you know they direct they lead they don't you know allow one to strip to you know uh, uh, slip off or to get into any ditch. You know, the presence and the constant supply of life and the light of God was there throughout that, that throughout that week, even up till now, you know, it's, it's there supernaturally to keep guiding, to keep, you know, leading, to keep supporting, to keep throwing, you know, light into any area of confusion. The third role that God plays, and you know, as I share this role, uh, it, it's it's good that you note them and 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 take advantage of them. You know, whenever you are going through, uh, you know, tribulation or trials or or, or 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 pain or grief. And like I said, you know, pain and grief and trial and tribulation. It's not just when you know one's child dies or anything. It could come on your job. Maybe you lost your job. You get looking for a promotion. You, was denied you you're looking for a contract you didn't get it your immigration paper was denied it could be sickness in the body it could be disappointment from a, from a friend it could come in any form in any shape you know so the third role that god plays in a situation like this is that he makes a way of escape oh thank you lord he always make a way of escape he will not leave you stranded first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 from the Passion Translation, the Passion Translation, it said, we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. Time of testing is normal for every human being. It said, but God, God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, the nature, and the timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more for along with each trial, God has provided, God has provided, not that he will provide, God has provided for you a way of escape 
that will bring you out of it victoriously. Glory be to God. I told you, I've shared with you one imagery, uh, you know, encounter that I had with God sometimes. I, I, in that imagery encounter, I, I was in a place and suddenly I saw a wall erected around me, encircled me. The wall was so tall, I was so thick, and there was no way of escape, you know, out of that uh, enclosure. And so I was watching, and suddenly I saw a shadow of a man, you know, on, on the wall. I saw a shadow of a man on the wall, and I just kept looking. I kept looking. And then suddenly the shadow became like an engraving, as if, you know, uh, the, 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 the man was engraved, you know, on the wall. It's no longer a shadow. It was not like an engraving of, uh, you know, of a statue, you know, on the wall there, you know. So... Then I was watching. Suddenly, the, the statue became like a living, you know, uh, being. And the statue began to shake and shake and shake and shake and shake until this person shook himself out of the wall and he created a hole on the wall uh, for me to go through. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, in every situation you find yourself, remember that there is always a way, that Jesus is somewhere in that situation no matter how it appears as if there's no way out if anybody tells you there's no way out of any situation just remember from this encounter and this imagery that jesus is somewhere in that situation and if you can locate him he will move out for you to go through him because he is the way he is the way when you locate where he is in that situation he will he will become the bridge you will climb to pass he will become you know the the, the hole you will, you will go through the door you will go through you know so god always makes a way out of every situation that's one major role that he plays don't ever find yourself in a situation where you will believe the the, the report of the devil or the report of any man that there's no way out that is not true all right so the fourth role that god plays when we go through and these are my practical experience you know these are the things i experienced within that one one week the fourth role he plays is that god turns it around for good god turns it around for good roman 8 28 roman 8 28 you see and we know with great confidence i'm reading from amplified version and we know with great confidence that god who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love god to those who are called according to his plan and purpose if you are called according to his plan and his purpose, and if you are, a, you know, you are, you, are, you are alive and you are a child of God, you have a purpose here on earth, and you are called according to his plan. He said, for such people, you know, all things, all things work together as a plan for good for those who love God. It's only when you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior that everything may not work together for your good. And this is an opportunity today. If you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today's service is an opportunity for you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Listen to me. Life is spiritual. Life and everything in life is spiritual. And everything in life, you have to approach it from the, from the three dimensions, the spirit, the soul, and the body dimension. And if you are not knowledgeable in the, in the spiritual dimension, life will tear you apart. Life will pull you in different directions. You will not be, things, center will not hold. Things will break down eventually. No matter how long it lasts, things will eventually break down. If you don't understand how things work in the realm of the spirit. All right, so, so those are the, are the four things, four roles among many other roles that God plays in a situation. He's not the author of our pain or of our grief, but rather he's the one that stays there with you no matter. He's the fourth man in the fire. He's the fourth man in the fire with you. No man goes into the fire with any other man. It is God that goes into the fire with you. That's why he said, even when you are in the river, it will not overflow you. When you are in the fire, it will not burn you. Because why? He goes there with you. Number two, he supplies life to you throughout that period that you are, your, your life is not cut off from you. Illumination is not cut off from you. You know, support is not cut off from you. Number three, he makes a way of escape for you. 
He's the one, he's the way maker. He's the way maker, miracle worker. He's the one that makes a way for you out of no way. Number four, he turns everything around for good. And I know that all that we're going through now is it's already turning around for good. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to write a book on this. And already, I can, if I share with you the good that has come out of this, you will not even believe it. Unimaginable. You know, in the school he attended among his friends and things like that, dimension of things that are beginning to, to you know, to, to be jump-started. That probably even if he was, if, if he was, he were to be alive, he might not be able to take things to that dimension. You know, they are already coming up. You know, you know. So, so, so it's already turning around for good, and I know that this is just the beginning. The 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 the, the, the life, the, the people that <clears throat> that that this incident will impact positively. Only God can tell the dimension to which it will to, it will get. All right. So, so these are just four things. You know, uh, four things about the role of God in a situation like this. So the second point I want to share with us, you know, remember the first point is that we have to have a productive mindset when we are going through pain and grief. And we said uh, one of the mindsets is thanksgiving and we give reason why you should give thanks. And, and we, one of the reasons is that source is not the God of, so God is not the source of the grief. And then we talked about the role of God. Now, apart from productive mindset that you should have throughout the time of grief and pain, the second thing that you should have is activate prayer support immediately. Activate prayer support immediately. Very important. You know, and, and that's exactly what we did this time. You know, again, even the first time when we had done it, that's what we did. We activated, you know, prayer support, you know, worldwide. And immediately this incident came, that was what was done. My wife texted I, you know, I texted and, and people began to pray. Oh my goodness, what a joy to know that you have committed people that loves you from their heart, that, that stands with you in the time of trial and tribulation, in the place of prayer. I could literally feel it where I, where I was. I could feel that there was an army of people that were bombarding heaven, you know, with prayer. There is nothing as strong as, you know, prayer support. When prayer altars are activated, because there comes a time, <clears throat> there comes a time when you become weak in your inner man. You know, so activating prayer support is something you do immediately. Jesus activated prayer support at a critical point in his life. Paul said, pray for us. You know, so prayer support, you know, from diverse prayer chain, you know, prayer teams, you know, you know, network of people praying is very critical when you are going through trial and tribulation. It's not a time to want to go through alone or to be by yourself or to avoid people. No, that's the time to put the word out there to those who will pray from their heart. And I want to thank you all that prayed. I thank you all that prayed. The prayer team, the leadership, the church, the friends and colleagues across the globe. Oh, in fact, when 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 text messages started coming in, you know, I, I, we are praying for you. We are, we are standing with you. We are praying along. It was overwhelming. You know, people. I I you know, people that just had, people that just had, and they just went into prayer. They just ignited prayer prayer chain. It's very, very, very encouraging. It's very strengthening. You know, uh, the dimension of, of, of groaning and intercession that some people went into when, as they were sharing with me when I spoke with them, it's, it's, it's very important. My mother in the Lord told me, you know, we, we, among other things, said this is the second time, it was the second time she would groan like that in the spirit that somebody around her would notice. You know, you know the church, the leadership, the membership, you can tell that a team of committed people, you know, were praying. So why do you need to activate prayer support? Why do you need to act activate prayer support? You know, number one, for divine strength in the inner man. For divine strength in the inner man. You know, the Bible says, 
In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, the, the Passion Translation, is it? And I pray that he will unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength flood your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. For divine strength in your inner man, there are situations where your inner man becomes to be, you know, to get weakened, you know, by situation, by circumstances, you know, and at that time you need people to pray for divine strength in your inner man because the Bible says, if your your strength, if you faint in the day of of adversity, it says your strength is small. You know what God said about Peter? God said to Peter, he said, Peter, the devil has taken permission to sift you. That's why I tell you that God is not the source of any, 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 any sorrow or any, any grief or any, any trial. He said the devil took permission to try you. So it was not God that, that was trying Peter. It was Satan. But this was said, God, you know, Satan took permission to do that. So Satan was permitted to the degree what he did. Look, there's nothing going on in your life. Satan cannot just wake up and just begin to toil with your li life like that. No, as a child of God. No, with your family, with your ministry. No. Anything Satan is able to do is because he has permission to do it. And if he has permission to do it, it's for a good, you know, purpose. Otherwise, you have authority, you know, within you. You know, unless you permit him to just play around with your life, you have authority within you, you know, to put Satan where he belongs. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, when you exercise your authority, you know, Satan has no, 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 no choice than to listen to, you know, your word of command. Because as Christ is, so you are in, in, your, in your spirit man. So you are. And so when you exercise your authority like that, and you still see certain things that didn't go the way you expected them to go, it's permitted to go that way, believe me. And when it is permitted to go that way, it's for a good purpose. It's not because Satan is powerful or Satan is, is you know, is, is this and that. No, Satan is under our feet at any time, even till tomorrow. Satan is under our feet. And there is nothing Satan can do. And there's no glory that belongs to him whatsoever in the life of a believer so but there comes a time when that inner strength remember the bible says god is able to do exceeding abundantly over and above what you think of us according to the power that worketh in you so you don't want to get to a situation where that power that worketh in you becomes weakened that's why you need to activate you know prayer support immediately paul said i pray that you know he will unveil within you unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being and i i enjoyed that supernatural strength in my inner man throughout and i know it couldn't have been anything else but the prayer of the saint number two why do you need to activate prayer for divine peace for divine peace philippians 4 6 philippians 4 6 said don't be pulled in different direction or worried about a thing, but be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Be saturated with prayer. Be saturated. So the, for you to get saturated with prayer, it's not just the one that you are praying alone. You need to activate people to start praying so that you become saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. He said, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding we make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. So you activate prayer for divine peace. The first reason you activate prayer is for divine strength in your inner man, then for divine peace, and number three, for divine faith, for divine faith. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32, Luke 22, 31 to 32, he said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as a wheat, but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. Thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, converted, strengthen thy bread. Thy bread. So the reason why Jesus permitted Satan, you know, to sift Peter is so that Peter will go through it and be able to strengthen the brethren when they also go through similar situations. So there was a purpose for Jesus permitting this. But the prayer Jesus prayed for Paul for peter is so that his faith will not fail 
It means it's possible for your faith, faith to fail in the face of trial and tribulation. So you, you activate prayer for divine faith so that your faith will not fail. And, 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 and finally for today, because of our time, the fourth reason why you should activate prayer is for divine intervention. For divine intervention. You know, in, 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 in Psalm 50, Psalm 50 verse 15, Psalm 50 verse 15, we are told, call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. When you activate prayers like that, on the day of trouble, there is divine intervention that leads to deliver, deliverance, that leads to liberty and freedom. Remember the story in Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12, you know, when Peter was arrested, the Bible says in verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made without ceasing unto God of the church, you know, uh, let me see, of the church unto God for him. So the church began to pray, you know, for Peter, and suddenly there was a divine intervention you know for those of you who prayed those of you who were praying you know like i told you you know in the leadership meeting I, prayer prayer prayers you know prayers was activated all over the world with friends believers you know brethren church members family friends you know you know ministry friends and all of that and some specific men of god fathers in faith they were all invited and they prayed over the phone, you know, with, with us. The who and who in the body of Christ, they prayed over the phone with us. For for all of you that prayed and you thought maybe God didn't answer the prayer, that was not what happened. Believe me, the way prayer bombarded heaven. In fact, God Himself had no choice than to send Daniel back, because. As at the time all of you were praying, Daniel was already at the bosom of God. God said that to me. He said, now I'm sending him back to you again. And that again is very significant to me because of the history. He said, I'm sending him back to you again, even though he is in my bosom, and I will have retained him, but you receive him. I believe it was out of the bombardment of heaven by faithful men and women that were presenting reasons before God why Daniel should be sent back. God could not hold back. God had no choice than to yield to your voice. He yielded to your voice. He heard your prayers and he sent Daniel back. Because by the time I got to the scene, as I was telling you, there was no life left in Daniel. But because of the prayer of the saint, the bombardment of heaven, and because of what God has said to me, confidence rose. The, my inner strength was there. You people were praying. My inner strength was there. My inner faith was there. I believed that he will come back. So I began to call back his life. I began to call back his life. And they took him into ICU. The doctors wanted to prevent me from entering. I bulldozed my way into the ICU. And I began to call back his life. And after about 30 minutes, brethren or so, his life came back to him. That was answer to your prayers. That was your God you call upon that answered your prayer. That was the God that ruled in the affairs of men that answered your prayer. I saw it physically like this. The doctors, the nurses, the ER people, I mean, they busted into, into joy. In fact, one doctor was telling a nurse, I can remember this vividly. He said, give me this. He said, give me this. And maybe the nurse was not, you know, no. He said, he said, he said, be quick. The nurse said, what, what? There's nothing to panic about. The miracle has already happened. That was the response of the nurse. In here. He said, the miracle has already happened. There's nothing to pa panic about. Let's relax. God. And so, so God answered your prayer and sent his life back. Then I now began, we, we called for the surgeon. The surgeon, you know, did the surgery. Then I began to speak to the spirit of Daniel. And I said, Daniel, God has released you. You come back. Come back. God has released you. You come back. And after, you know, some hours, about an hour or two of that conversation, you know, a scripture was prompted in my spirit, which is, uh, which is Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. It was prompted in my spirit as I was talking to Daniel, as I was talking to, to the spirit. Daniel, come back. Come back fully. Come back fully. You know, come back to life. You have that purpose to fulfill your death. And then this scripture was prompted in my spirit. Uh, Jude 1 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless 
before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. When I read this scripture and I was saying, what God, what does this scripture mean? And then the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, Daniel is saying he has been presented, you know, uh, in the presence of God's glory with exceeding joy. And he wants to remain there. That's the understanding, you know, there's a way God speaks to everybody. One of the ways God speaks to me, you know, most often is scripture. He will, he will indicate a scripture to me to go and read. And when I read the scripture, I will get the understanding of that script, what that scripture is saying to me. So I, I now began, when I got this response from, 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 you know, from the scripture, as I was talking to Daniel, I, 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 and the Holy Spirit gave me the understanding that Daniel is saying that he has been presented faultless in the presence of the glory of God with exceeding joy. And he, that's where he wants to uh, remain. And so I, I began to now uh, negotiate further. You know, it was an interaction in the realm of the spirit. I began to negotiate, you know, further. I said, Daniel, you remember, you know, nobody gets there and taste that kind of glory and wants to come back here. I understand that because a few months ago, I had my fourth encounter of heaven. But before that, I went to hell, that encounter, and then I was taken to heaven. So I could see the difference between the two. Uh, I said, I understand, you know, that nobody gets to where you are and wants to come back here. I said, but remember, life you want to impact. Remember, you know, the, the people you want to affect, the, the less privileged, you know, the poor. We've had that discussion. Me and him, we've had that discussion. So I was telling him, so you have to make a sacrifice to come back because of these people. Because God has released you to come back. But, the, you know, the choice is now yours. You need to come. I was giving him reasons. I was presenting reasons to him why he needs to make the sacrifice. That's what Jesus did, you know, for you and I. For you to even get to where you are now, to have access to where you are now, is because Jesus left that place and came here. That's why you got that access. So I was giving him reasons and all of that. And after about an hour or two again, because I was there for 12 hours straight, nonstop. I was waiting for 12 hours. I took special permission, you know, from, from the hospital management. So after, you know, after about two hours again, a scripture came up in my spirit strongly. And I went to re read that scripture. And it's Philemon 1.11. Remember, we got Philemon 1.12 before. Philemon 1.11 says, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. When I read this, I was saying, okay, what's the meaning of this? And the Holy Spirit immediately gave me the interpretation of what that scripture is saying to me, what that response is from the spirit of Daniel that came through, you know, this scripture, is that even when he come back here, he will no longer be profitable unto us. But where he is now, he's profitable, you know, to, to, to God and to us, to himself and to us. When I had that understanding, I said, okay, okay, okay. I see why Daniel doesn't want to come back. And, and then so I switched from talking to, to, to Daniel and convincing him to come back and went back to God. I said, God, you're, I mean, it was an interesting atmosphere, brethren. It's better experience than described. You know, the, 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 you know, the dimension, I mean, the realm I was that, that time. Can just it's, it's better experience than this course. And I know that that can only happen when the because of the prayer of the saints all over the world. So I went back to God. I said, God, you are the God of all flesh. If this boy is saying that even when he comes back, he will not, not be useful, which means he will not be whole. He will not be, you know, he probably, you know, be vegetable or something like that i said you are the god of all flesh and there is nothing you cannot do you know let me extract a commitment from you that he will be completely whole when he comes back and i will go back to daniel and continue my negotiation with him and when i when i stayed with god with that for another one hour or two i got a response from god it was not you know it was not a scripture it was not you know anything like that it was a still small voice of the holy spirit that came from my inside said but you were not supposed to have him more than three days and you've had him for 15 years you know when that came when that came from the lord then i knew that the game you know was over i knew that the game was over and so the understanding that encounter gave to me is that in any situation and circumstance you find yourself there are stakeholders involved it's not just you alone it's not just from your perspective alone. So me and all of you that were praying at that time were just on one aisle of the stakeholder's table. But Daniel is also a stakeholder on the other side, and God is also a stakeholder 
on the other side. But at times, situation, in situation and circumstances like that, we don't consider the, the other stakeholders. We only consider our own, you know, our own perspective of the issue, and we want to you know, insist on our own perspective. So God answers your prayer as he has been answering at all times, but there are stakeholders. There are stakeholders that need to be you know, considered. At that time, I knew you know, that the game you know, was over, and I began you know, to get myself uh, to face the reality you know, that Daniel is in glory. But the joy of it all is that Daniel is in glory, because God said that to me the first time, that he was with him in his bosom, and he will have retained him. And Daniel also responded to, to me from the scriptures that he's in, the glo he's in glory and he's, you know, uh, uh, greatly uh, rejoicing, you know, where he is. That's a consolation, you know, uh, for us. I will continue with, with, with this series uh, on Thursday night. Thursday night, I think Thursday is October 1st. I will continue with this series and probably round up, you know, that or maybe that might extend one more one more series if I'm not able to cover it. But a book is coming out of it when the you know, you know, extensive insight and explanation to all of these processes will be packaged together uh, to be a literature that will help each and every one of us to be able to deal with pain and grief in time of tribulation and trials. Glory be to God. I want us to bow our head at this point. And if you are here listening to me, like I said, in the middle of this message, and you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and just say to him, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin, write my book, my name in the book of life. Uh, I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin, and you rose on the third day. I will not serve sin anymore. I will serve you for the rest of my day. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If you said that prayer with me, I want you to just go to the chat box, chat, you know, chat section, and, and chat your name and number, and somebody will get across to you to tell you what next you know, to do. I want to pray for you at this time <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name that is above every other name, I thank you for bringing us to the last Sunday in the month of September, and thank you for your word that came to us today. Lord, we are convinced beyond reasonable doubt that you are never the, the source of our pain or our grief. We thank you, but instead you are there with us. Instead, you make a way of escape for us. Instead, you supply life for us throughout that journey, and you turn things around to work for our good. We thank you because these four roads will be evident in our life as an individual, as a family, and as a church in this season and in this time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the prayers of the saint and the resultant effect of it. And I ask, oh Lord, that everyone that prayed, Lord God Almighty, in that time and in that season, oh God, let the reward of faithfulness accrue to their own account in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the reward, oh God, of seed sowing in the place of prayer, the reward of an intercessor, the reward of a watcher, the reward of support and help that they gave, let it accrue to their own account. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. There shall be no evil report concerning you. You will do well. You will succeed. In the, your joy will be full. The peace of God that passes all understanding will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen.